Hi, this is Thomas Smith from Enemy, and we are here today with Ruben from Unknown Mortal Orchestra. And so we're here to talk about your new album, uh, Sex and Food, is what it's called. Why did you settle on that name? I think um, what what happened was um, when I th when I first started, I kind of needed something to work with, so I, you know, start the album. So I came up with a name for the record and tried to get a friend of mine to make a cover for it. So I'd kind of work backwards and. Uh, the name was quite kind of heavy, and the world just got like really heavy as <laughs> over the um, as I made the record. The, the world got crazier and crazier, especially uh, I think in the states. And uh, so I wanted something. I just changed the name because I wanted something to make. Um, I wanted. I wanted when people heard the name of the record. I wanted it to be something something good and something kind of dumb and I wanted to explain that that's something about myself um, that I'm like simple and dumb I'm not like <laughs> overly serious and stuff because I think the record picked up a lot of these serious like uh, kind of heavy uh, themes and um, yeah I wanted to keep it dumb I suppose. <laughs> so it's kind of a balance between because you know sex and food both very enjoyable things but like some of the themes on the album they're a little bit darker in terms of the influences you were having? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I think I think maybe. I'm not sure though. I, I, I have to like wait and see what people think when they hear the record, but it, it might be the case, yeah. And so like, when you went into to start writing, were you thinking about keeping it along a theme? Like, like your last record was a lot about love and that kind of stuff. Were you thinking of setting out a theme from the start for this album or just seeing what happens? No, I mean, it's just like funny because you need some kind of because it could be anything, you know, so you need something to kind of um, push you forward. And on the last record I had, I started with this phrase, multi-love, and then everything kind of starts to, it's like the, in this weird way, everything starts to kind of revolve around this idea. So, um, so you have to be kind of careful in a way what you choose. To but you put yourself down on the, you don't want to send yourself down on the wrong path. Yeah, or just like, you know, you have to be ready to accept that or something. And then um, for this one, I think I just wanted there to be a cover. Um, my friend Neil Krug is a photographer, and I thought if I started with a really beautiful cover, then I would be able to kind of put the mu you know, whatever that was, and I would put the music inside it uh, later and kind of try to imagine um, what does this album sound like? You know, this album with this beautiful cover, you know. And so, um, yeah, that was kind of the idea. <laughs> well, it kind of reflected in the songs, like Honey Bee is one of the most sort of uplifting songs on there, quite a joyous song. Um, when did you sort of come up with the idea for that one? Um, well, I was, I, it was it's, it's about my daughter, basically, and um, her middle name is Honeybee. And uh, I was um, with my brother and my bandmate, Jake, in New Zealand. And we were in um, my brother Cody's um, home studio, and I kind of taught them the basic like idea of it and then we kind of just ran through it a couple of times and then realized that it was almost finished <laughs> kind of just in these two takes we did and then um, I think you know it was just a case of like you know it was like a really nice day it was like a sunny day and everybody felt good and then we kind of accidentally made this thing we were really happy with and so we were just sort of hoping that you know the, the process of finishing the song was from the lyrics and everything that we added later, it was just about like not ruining what we kind of captured in that like 15 minutes of random recording. <laughs> um, yeah, and so I suppose like I was trying to, you know, I, I had this idea that it was about my daughter and um, I've written a few um, platonic love songs in the past that kind of, um, and so it was, I was trying to, um, kind of capture this idea that you, this like platonic platonic um, love, but you have to kind of um, be careful that it doesn't become too, I think the thing I was mostly worried about is that it doesn't become like so innocent and naive that it just becomes like pointless. So yeah, I think I put in uh, um, some ideas that, uh, or like some kind of weird advice about the world that might not like, um, occur to her until she's like older, like maybe so 25 or something. Like a time capsule kind of gift. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And so you've got the song American Guilt on there as well. That's kind of the opposite about that. It's kind of like a, is that like the first political song you've ever written? Um, I don't really, I don't, don't see, I, hopefully none of it, 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 in my mind, none of it's political at all. So, and I was worried that the world was going to um, become this very political place and I wanted to, um, I suppose my strategy was kind of like if I kind of concentrate on my own feelings and just kind of pretend that it's not political at all, then um, it would be more, you know, the anything political that made its way in there would be kind of accidental. So I don't really like have an, a, a, like a particular opinion about it. I just think American guilt is something that is like a feeling that um, came from, because I've been living in the States about 10 years now, and the more I kind of understand the culture and the history and of that place, the, the more I feel this kind of guilt settle in, kind of settle into me. And I suppose like um, that's what the song is really about. It's not like me pointing um, a finger at anyone else. It's just kind of um, I'm just criticizing myself and talking about the way that I feel about that. And so it's kind of just a really simple feeling. Um, and I suppose if a song's political, it's mostly what other people, can, how other people react to it. Um, yeah. And you kind of recorded it all over the world? You were recording it in different kind of studios, is that right? Mm-hmm. And what kind of effect did that have on the sound that came out of it? Because there's some really heavy songs mm-hmm. and then there's some sort of dancey, disco-y elements to it. Did that jumping around have an effect on it? Um, yeah, I think so. I just, um, I'd made a couple of records um, in my basement kind of mostly by myself and um, I just got like um, bored and kind of lonely down there. <laughs> and so I kind of, uh, I wanted to collaborate more and more. I, on the last record, I collaborated a lot with my brother, but it was all in the basement and, as well. And so I kind of wanted to um, do more of that and kind of, um, and uh there were certain places that I'd always wanted to return to and certain places that I um, felt like might inspire me. I was thinking about like Jimi Hendrix a lot. <laughs> and I was thinking about trying to access that like influence um, in some way that would be inspiring. And I was thinking about how I think the first time I heard Jimi Hendrix music was probably in a, a movie about Vietnam and, um, and how uh, much of the music from the 60s that influenced me, I think I probably saw it all first in these like Vietnam TV shows and Viet- Vietnam War like movies and stuff. So I thought maybe if I went to Vietnam it might be inspiring. And I thought it was kind of cool like the idea that maybe Vietnam might be the only place that ever ever defeated the United States militarily. Probably, yeah. Yeah, and I kind of thought like it might, it w- might be a nice place to escape um, all that madness and kind of go somewhere that kind of held held them at bay yeah. and kind of see if that was an inspiring place to look at my life in America from, you know. And did it work? Yeah, it was yeah. like, yeah, it was really, it was um, pretty amazing. I think I would probably um, go back there and, and record again. I think it was a um, really special memory recording there. And actually, um, my dad came out there for a few days as well and recorded with us. And, we kind of we made another record actually that which is more like a I guess maybe like kraut rock or electric jazz record kind of really? but, yeah like um, and maybe we'll put that out this year. So you've just yeah. got the, a record sort of in the bank ready to go. Like yeah, a family affair was, kind yeah, of. and it was sort of I met, yeah we made it with the band and with my dad and with um, a guy called Ming Nguyen who's uh, it was like a, he's like a traditional. Um, Vietnamese musician that we just um, kind of randomly became friends with when going into the studio and kind of just hanging out there and kind of meeting different musicians and he was into um, kind of uh, avant-garde music and and jazz and rock and roll and stuff so we became friends and started just randomly recording and then you know we were going through everything we'd done there and it was just like this is a whole separate record everything we did with him so yeah. And so you're now, this is your fourth album. When you started releasing stuff just onto the internet, when you started out, did you expect to ever make it to this point? Where you no, I was, <laughs> no <laughs> uh, not at all. And then um, even, I think, um, 
my bandmate Jake and I talk about it quite a lot, even when we had decided that we were going to make a band and we were touring um, and and like coming here and stuff and 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 all that. We our biggest dreams we kind of went we kind of blew past them, you know, three years three or four years ago, and you know, like we we thought like oh, one day we'll play Shepherd's Bush Empire and that, that just kind of came and went and. So now we're in this sort of weird space where it's just like we didn't expect to be be here, so we're kind of making it all up as we go along. We're kind of already achieved all of the dreams that I... Maybe I growing up in New Zealand, like I didn't, my dreams weren't very big or something, I don't know. Are you dreaming a bit bigger now? Are you thinking what's just coming next? Just making it up as I just, go along You're now. just winging yeah. it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so the album Sex and Food, if you have to choose to give up sex or food, which one would it be? Um... Um, sex, probably. You'd give up sex and keep the food? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There we go. I'd yeah. be the other way around, Simple. but that's just me. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Reuben, for coming by and swinging by the albums out later this year. And thank you very much. <laughs>